Hello everybody and welcome back to my next part of Belladonna. I don't know, but I like the game. Um, okay, it's not uh, so shocking horror, but I like it. I like the main character, I like her voice. Um, the yeah. door is locked. Oh, the door is locked. Um, yeah. Maybe this one? Ah, uh -huh, okay. Can I uh, do something here? No? Okay, another journal page. I like the game. <laughs> okay, as my conscientious <laughs> grows stronger, so does me hatred for my husband. Each morning he brings me with him down to the laboratory and places me in a corner. There I will stand for the rest of the day, stiff as a stator, silent as death. Occasionally he will throw me a glance or a smile. I find my my what? <laughs> I find my body smiling warmly back, almost like a reflex, and this indoctrination disgusts me. I'm living I am a living decoration, a breathing stator of flesh. His wind up toy his wind up toy bride. But little does he suspect my eyes are darting across the room, secretly and atten actively attentively following his smallest movements, I carefully memorize every step he takes, every note he writes down, every tiny detail of his ghoulish discovery. I only he knew how fast I am learning, what a willing student I am. As of late he has even picked up the habit of explaining his scientific work aloud. It helps him think, I suppose. And I nod and smile and give little encouraging laughs at all the right places. He's muttering his darkest secrets to me and I drink it all up. And oh, if only he knew just how close he brusheth with his own demise. Hundreds of times each day he's close enough to me for my hands to reach up and snap his neck. My strong fingers around his throat, slowly squeezing his precious life out of him. But no matter how close he stands, my arms will not move. I am a prisoner in my own corpse, staring out through glassy eyes, but unable to will any action into my own dead limbs. Call for me and I will walk. Ask me a question and I will talk. But my rotting brain is unable to form intuitives its own. I am a golem following orders. Yet with each passing night my willpower grows stronger. I write my thoughts down diligently and practice my mental capacities with all the resolve I have. The results are slow but reliable. One day soon I will have the what? Tensi tenacity to strike. And as soon as the time comes, strike I will. One of these days his lovely life-sized doll will suddenly find the power within her to execute her swift revenge. <laughs> okay. Oh! Just two left. Closed. Okay. So let's see what's here. Okay. It looks like a bedroom. That's a big wardrobe. I bet yes. you could hide a corpse in there. Ugh. Actually, I better not open it and check. Yes, uh, I think it's better. <laughs> it's a broken mirror. It's a locker. Let's take a look inside. Oh, yes. A rope. of rope. I wonder why we're keeping rope in the bedroom. Ew. Ew. <laughs> oh. It's like a Fifty Shades of what the fuck. <laughs> I wonder if this key fits. Oh. Ugh. It's a There's big a key. key hidden inside. A very important one. Okay. Broken mirror. The mirror is completely shattered. I think someone in here didn't really like the reflection. Ok. 
Okay. Can I pick up some glass sharp or something? No? <gasps> what? Uh -huh. Who are you? Uh, can I take uh, the journal page? A note. A note. <sighs> failure. The attempt was a failure. I could not lure my lost, my lost lover back into her deceased corpse. What? At? Eight? eight ah! Ah! <laughs> all! All! Oh, sorry. All my preparations in rain. All alone now. No one to turn my key. This is the... Okay, here's the keyhole. Here's the big key. We have to... At least the view is nice from up here. Yes, it's nice. Is Why? she dead? Yeah. She doesn't move a muscle, yet she sits upright. She's like a mannequin of human flesh. Yes. Oh. Okay, I think we try it. Let's let's try. Clara, it really is you. I was so certain I'd never see you again. You didn't wake up. I... I woke up. I've been wandering lost ever since, trying to find out what's going on. How are you feeling? Do you remember me? I have no memories of you, or of myself. But I found some notes lying around. I can only assume you're the one called Belladonna? I am Belladonna. Murdered and reanimated by Dr. Von Trauerschloss. At first a mindless mechanical doll, but I slowly regained control over my brain. And when the time was right, I broke free. I saw the doctor's body. Yes, I crushed his skull. Standing over his blood-soaked remains, I was free at last. But where did I come from? If he was dead, was it you who brought me back? Yes, my love. You were the only thing on my mind, as I stood there, alone and victorious. I had secretly watched the doctor's process, and I desperately wanted to believe that I could get you back. I unearthed your grave and carried your dead body down to the laboratory. I did everything right, to the smallest detail, but you didn't wake up. And my time was running out. I can't turn my own key, and now that I was alone in the castle, I knew my life force would run out quickly. But for all my effort, you remained dead, and with no one to keep me vital, I eventually sat down here and just... stopped. But I did wake up. Yes, apparently you did. Your body had been in the ground for quite some time. Perhaps that made the reanimation process slower, but with your key powering your brain directly, you did not have to go through the drawn-out, sluggish wake-up. I take it your cognitive powers and language have been with you from the start. Well, yes. Excellent. Then I have even improved on the doctor's method. But I doubt independent thinking and free will was ever in his interest to reproduce. Do you think you could do it again? Create more of us, you mean? Yes, I hold the secret of life and death, and I plan to use it. The experimentations must continue. And the two of us will have no place in this world. Quite right. So, we'll make us a place. Dead bodies will never be in short supply. We'll make more of our kind. A whole new race of the damned. Where do we start? I know for a fact that there's a fresh body lying out there in the Great Hall. The Doctor. His flesh, at least. We won't be using his wretched brain. I've already destroyed it in any case. But the body will do. We will have to find a few other ingredients. Will you help me? I... Of course I will. Thank you, my love. I'll carry the body down to the laboratory and start with the preparations. And in the meantime, you can help me with a few other things. The doctor's brain is completely destroyed. I made sure of that. 
I don't think any of us want his villainous brain back amongst us. We're going to need to find a new one. Secondly, we will also need some clockwork parts. We have to manufacture a force to keep the dead body going. Thirdly, not only the brain, but also the head and the cranium were damaged. If we can find a new head, that would save a lot of reconstructing effort. Okay. So, let's I ask I saw a brain preserved in alcohol down in the laboratory. Oh, you did? That's good. That, my dear, is the brain of baby Lucas. Oh my god. Your son? Lucas was never buried. The doctor had the body cremated very quickly and thus incinerated all the evidence that the corpse was not complete. He had stolen the brain and kept it for himself. I don't know what he claimed about not planning on resurrecting his child, but the truth is that he kept the brain all the same. And now you want your child back? No, my dear. It's just a brain. I wanted you back, so I took great care to preserve your personality. But this brain is young, and has been dead for very long. I suppose the creation will be my child, in a way, but not my son Lucas. Okay, so a brain. Clockwork? Clockwork? Yes, we need something to supply the body with the force to move. We can't make the heart beat again, so we use the spring-loaded clockwork. In the future, we'll have to think of a source of parts more reliable than salvaging old time pieces, but that'll do for now. I see. I see. Thank you. Okay, then a head? Well, we need to find a fresh human head. Yes, I've smashed up the head of Wolfram rather frivolously. I'm afraid it's beyond rescue. I was thinking of my grandmother, Francesca Canosa. I'm sure you've seen her portrait in the study. She was buried some time ago, but her cranium should be sufficiently preserved. She rests in the mausoleum in the cemetery outside, but there is a hidden way into the tomb behind the armor in the basement. Uh -huh. Behind, uh, what was his name? She called him Roland? Was it Francesca's portrait I saw in the study? Yes, Francesca Canosa was my grandmother. My family moved to this country several generations ago. My father, named Hugo, gave me the name Belladonna to allude to our ancestry. I was the last of the Knossas, and I acquired the name von Trauerschloss through marriage. And now, well, now I'm not very concerned with human family names. We will not reproduce in a mother-daughter kind of way, so what use will we have of family names? Okay. Behind the I'll armor? I'll go take a look behind the suit of armor. Thank you. Okay, then, uh, more questions? Some things have been puzzling me. Did I used to have hair? You had beautiful hair. Unfortunately, I had to shave it all off in order to operate on your head and open your cranium. Yet, you're not bald. I was revivified directly after my death, when my body was still fresh. You, my dear, had been in the ground for quite some time. I had to reconstruct large parts of your decomposed corpse. And that explains the metal construction holding together my skull. I have my fair share of screws and bolts myself, but they are carefully hidden. I opted to sacrifice your pretty hair so that I could work more on preserving your brain. Something the good doctor did not do for me. Okay, Will it grow back? I... I don't rightly know. Maybe. We'll have to wait and see. I want to ask something else. I'm here for you. Okay, um... What is what this, is this I'm wearing? I'm so sorry about that. I covered you in scraps and bandages I found in the laboratory. I had to cut open and discard most of what you were buried in, in order to stitch you up. I want you to know that my plan was to be right next to you when you woke up, to help you understand and to find a proper dress. I'm so sorry it didn't come to pass like that. Oh, it's okay. So... On my way in here, I killed a cat. It was in my way and it felt so natural to just dispose of it. It worries me a bit. How so? I may have a functional brain, but what about a... a soul? Shouldn't there be something in me stopping me from hurting others? Or at least, making me feel bad about it? 
You're right. It did come very natural for me to murder my husband. But I'm not too worried about this. I have no desire to commit unnecessary killings, and I do have control over my actions. Okay. What if you're raising an army of cold-hearted mass murderers? They won't be mass murderers any more than you and I. And besides, why should we prioritize the lives of the living above the lives of the dead? Okay. I want to ask something else. I'm here for you. Yes. Why did you put this wind-up mechanism in my quest. head? Yours is in your back. Yes, the damned doctor had placed my wind-up mechanism in my back. It goes straight into my chest and heart, giving me a strong central of power. But it is placed outside my own reach. Well, you, so you can turn and... Uh, so... You can't turn it yourself? No, I can't. I have to depend on others. That's why I chose to put the key in the back of your head, well within reach of your own hands. I know what it means to not be in control of your own existence, and I will never put someone else in the situation I'm in. Thank you. Of course. Okay. I want so I think we else. should go and... I'm here for um, you. Bring the ingredients. I'll start looking for the objects then. Thank you. Come talk to me if there's something you're unsure about. Okay. So... <clears throat> okay. Back to the... Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. Aha, oh, the dead cat. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, so behind the armor, behind the suit of armor is an entrance to the, um, to the mausoleum. So I think we should have a look. Okay, so let's go down. Go down. You. Would you please? Yes. <laughs> move. Move. Just a little bit. Okay. Come. 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 So, behind the suit of armor. Belladonna was right. There is a secret switch behind Roland the poet. Roland the poet. Yes. Okay. Here. So, uh, I think show. I can't just drop the lantern into the hole. It's gonna break when it hits the bottom. Oh, if uh, there is a bottom. <laughs> yes, um, yes, sure. I'll just tie this rope to the lantern. Yes, it's better, so. Now. Yes, I can lower the lantern into the hole. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. I must be directly underneath the mausoleum in the cemetery. So. <laughs> I think here's uh, the last journal page, right? I can't believe it. It's another letter. How did it end up down here? <gasps> Clara, f uh, Clara Fieber. Oh my gosh. Clara Stieber. Okay. After insistent probing from my lady Belladonna, I to take to the pen come evening. I too take to the pen come evening, okay? The scribbling does not come as readily for me as it does for her. Yet I do most certainly see the appeal and the activity. So much has happened in my life of late, my brain is overflowing with joy and sequences disorder. And if I manage to write down a map of but a fraction of it all, there would be an enormous relief. Verily it all centers around Belladonna, this queen regnant of the castle, who has turned her benevolent face towards me, and thus filled my person with happiness I had previously thought unimaginable. Imaginable. I still remember the first time I saw her, standing next to her husband when I took up work in the 
household, and I remember how she seemed to me to glow. The two of them lost a child shortly after that, and the tragedy would linger in the castle for a long time. All the other servants started to leave one by one, but as much as I wanted to, I found myself unable. I kept postponing my departure with each new day, and I found myself dancing around Belladonna's flame, drawn to it as strongly as I had been from that first glance. By the time she finally recovered from her melancholy, I was the only one left in the castle and it was at this time the miracle happened. Belladonna saw me in a new way. This tempestuous affair, galloping and world shaking, and yet so quiet, so hidden. The castle is ours to rule as we please. But only as long as we do not arouse the suspicion of the grave robbing goblin in the basement. It is as if I have stepped into one of the fairy stories my grandmother used to tell. But Nana's stories always ended with someone losing their head or being eaten alive. Though seemingly everlasting, this bliss of ours, a seed of doubt is growing in my heart. Belladonna is married, after all, and who am I to break their wedlock? <laughs> Theirs is not happy union, true. But I am seducing my love to break her woes and soil her soul, and what wretched ruin will that bring upon us? For a long while Bernadonna was all I dreamed about, my queen and goddess, and my deepest wish was for her to let me into her life and let me worship her. I thought I would give up anything for that, but now that I am here, I wonder if I have sacrificed so much. Belladonna comes from high society and she doesn't realize just how much she takes for granted. It is still clear who is the lady and who is the servant. Can I keep on living like this or will I have to do the unthinkable and leave her? I made Belladonna promise not to read anything I wrote and looking at what I have just put down in ink, the weight of the promise is clear. I have forged into words, thoughts. I did not know I had, and it's vital that these pages remain secluded from my prying eyes. Secrets upon secrets, I shall hide this letter inside the old armor in the basement, one I call Ronald the Bard, where I doubt anyone will find it. I'm descending into the dungeon as soon as I'm done here, and I hide this note on my way, as the master has asked me to fetch for him a certain plant from the greenhouse. As strange as as strange as this whole situation is, I am still obey his requests, if only to keep up appearances. Okay, um, we found the last um, journal page. And yeah, so we are Clara, we are the secret lover of um, Belladonna. And here's the mausoleum. Oh, what's this? Here's Francisca's coffin, but the lid is much too heavy for me to lift. Um, Maybe I could break it open, but I'll need some sort of big hammer or mace for that. But, uh, how about the candlestick? The things one does for love. Oh, yes. Francisco you look Carlos. very peaceful, but I do so need your head. How shall I remove it? With some surgical tool from the laboratory, perhaps? Um, okay, um... <laughs> I tried with a screwdriver, but I don't know if it, um... What? Francisco that won't work. Yes, that will work. I thought it. Okay, um, so let's go to the laboratory. And have a look if there are some surgery in... What the hell? Oh, she's already here. With the body of uh, Dr. The toolbox is empty. The toolbox is empty.
them to. Whew. But huh? oh, here's the brain. The brain in the jar. The body of a deranged murderer. The decomposed head of an old lady. The brain of a small child. How could this possibly go wrong? Ew. <laughs> okay. Okay, maybe I should talk uh, to Belladonna about this. Welcome to the Lab of Horrors. Oh, yes. Um, I, I haven't, haven't gotten hold of the human head yet. But you did manage to get into the crypt. If you are having trouble separating the head from the neck, I'm sure you can find some sort of instrument for precisely that down here in the laboratory. But here... I'll, I'll get, get going. Here. I don't know, here isn't any anything two box. The toolbox is empty. The two box is empty. Oh here. Uh, a bone saw. Ooh, surgical tools. Shiny. <laughs> oh, surgical tools. Shiny. Oh, she's so cute. Okay, so we have to cut off the head of an old lady. Now to carefully remove the head. It's remarkably well preserved. Ew. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so I think now. Ew. Another angel. Are you the third sibling? What did you do to get put down here? Is your name Gwendolyn? Gwendolyn. Okay. So, um, we have the brain, we have the hat, so let's go to the um, old grandpa. Grandfather's clock? Grandpa. <laughs> grandfather's clock, um, because we need some uh, clockwork tiles, pieces. Cockwheels, maybe. So let's have a short look at the time. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yes. Okay, grandfather clock. Yes, grandfather, not grandpa. I know. <laughs> Here's blood. I see a lot of mechanical parts. Mechanical in there. parts. Okay. I need to get them out somehow. Um, I think uh, you should try the screwdriver. Maybe. This faithful screwdriver will do the trick. Yes. Time to turn this old clock into a slightly peculiar wardrobe. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, so let's head back to. Can you go a little bit faster? Maybe. That would be nice. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're close to the end. Um, like I said in the beginning, in the first part, uh, this game is not very long. But it's so beautiful. I like it. I like Clara. And I like the voice of Clara. And how she, um, yes, sees things and um, give it names and yes it's cool so then um so okay i think we should hear the clockwork thank Part? you dear please here's the brain of lucas thank you dear please and here's Thank you, dear. The creation is complete. All we need to do now is force life into these dead limbs. That big switch on the wall initiates the procedure. Will you have the honor, my dear? Oh, gladly. Gladly, yes. Now it's time to pull the switch. <laughs> okay, so let's do it. The time has come. Time has come. I've wanted to pull this thing since the first time I saw it. <laughs> I know. Yes, ok, 
Okay. <laughs> so, um, it's the end. <laughs> I know it's very sad, but this is the end. Yes. Um. Okay, it's alive. Uh, you see, there's an army of dead bodies. Belladonna and Clara are finally reunited. Oh, there's the cat <laughs> with a key in the, in the head. <laughs> the cat is alive too, okay? Oh, that's... Yes. Okay, the game is by Nicholas Helen. The voice which has brains. Banes, sorry. <laughs> I was by... <laughs> I was at brains, oh... Voices Test Bane's original music Michael Trade. Okay. Do I have to click to see? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was Belladonna. I hope you liked it. So for me it was a very, very yes, a very short but a very beautiful game. So I hope you liked it. I hope you had fun. Um, feel free to hit the like button. If you like my videos, uh, feel free to hit the subscribing button. And yes, we will see you um, to another project of mine, if you will. I don't know uh, what it would be, but we will see. <laughs> I'm seeing. I'm. Oh! Her eyes are moving. <laughs> really cool. Okay. Um. Yes. I hope we see. Uh, we see us in the next project. And till then, stay safe.